Hello again and welcome. Hope everybody's doing okay. This is the circuit board out of a Fluke 77 that I found in the trash bin. This fuse was missing and then this smaller 630 milliamp fuse is not the correct one. I think this is a sand filled 500 milliamp one when I looked at it. But yeah, other than that, the meter works just fine. So what we're going to be doing today is testing this particular meter on our transient generator. The reason I want to run this one is because, first of all, it's quite old. Second of all, I have no intention on repairing it. The other reason I want to run it is because it's quite an early meter. We can see it's using these spark gaps. You see the small slit down the center. And then they're using these in place of what would typically be a MOV on a standard multimeter so I'm just kind of curious how this thing will hold up to our transient generator. What I'm going to do with this is because I don't really have a good way to set the switch. You can see I've made up this little standoff, just stuck it in a piece of tubing. It's kind of a pain to get this thing aligned up. So what I'm going to do with this is just run it in the voltage mode. So we'll set it to AC volts where you would typically use it. And we'll just apply our transients while we're in that mode and let's see what happens with it. So here I have a couple of batteries out of a few of the meters that I've evaluated. And I have a small wall wart. The output is 12 volts AC, 830 milliamps. Its input is 120 volts AC. I've actually got two of these. You can see the output is 12 volts DC, 500 milliamps. Again, it's 120 volts AC. These are not a switching power supply. You can see they're quite large. These physically contain a large transformer in them. If I were to, for example, just take this battery and put it across the output of the transformer, like so, and release it, I should get quite a poke off of this. Let's just give this a try. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely can feel that. So the scenario that I was talking about was, let's say a novice took their voltmeter, not saying that they would have a Brahman BM869S, and if they did, this wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but say they put this thing into the ohms mode and then they're measuring some coil resistance. So here you can see we're reading roughly 93 ohms. Now let's say the novice decided he wanted to heat up the coil and see how much of the resistance change. So they take their power supplier, in this case we're just using a 9 volt battery, and we attach it to the coil without disconnecting the meter. And then the sin happens is that we remove the battery and then that causes a high voltage transient to be induced across the meter. So it's pretty common for me to see posts from people that will say, I don't work with high voltages at all. But I think what happens a lot of times is novices don't understand what back EMF is, and they don't understand that just some simple things like a 9 volt battery and a wall wart can create quite a significant transient. I'll be the first one to admit that I've damaged my own meters doing stupid stuff like that. You know, when I was younger, I really didn't have any kind of formal education. I would just find things that were scrapped, essentially, and start tearing them apart and playing around with parts. I had an old Radio Shack analog meter and a vacuum tube one, and luckily for me, those meters were repairable. But later, when digital multimeters started to become more common, I bought that Fluke 8000A, and that meter has essentially no input protection. And it wasn't, you know, a battery back EMF like this that caused that meter to get damaged, but certainly other transients that I had created while working on the bench is what took it out. So I thought what we could do is just let's have a look at the transient that this thing will generate. Here you can see I have my high voltage probe attached directly across the output of our transformer. Again, I just have a couple of clip leads going to this transformer up to our small 9 volt battery. Now the scope is currently set for 200 volts per division using this probe. And it's also set for 100 microseconds per division. I'll set it to normal trigger. I'll adjust this trigger level down to about 100 volts. Maybe a little lower. Let's just see what we get. There you go. So. You can see there's quite a bit of ringing going on, and that ringing is up three levels, so about 600 volts at the peaks of these. Let's just go ahead and set our threshold up a little higher, and let's go ahead and zoom in. And you can see our peaks are actually exceeding 600 volts coming off of this. Let's adjust this thing down. And let's attach a second transformer in series. So, again, we have that second wall wart here. Right there, that is two divisions up. That's basically a thousand volts. 
So now let's take two of these 9 volt batteries, put those in series. Let's try triggering it up now. Let's zoom out a little bit and see what this looks like. Uh, this is 5 microseconds per division. You can see how this thing oscillates. Let's go out a little further. That's a pretty nasty waveform. Again, peaks in this about a thousand volts. This big rounded arc right here, that's getting close to about 800 volts in the peak. Again, just from a couple of 9 volt batteries and a couple of wall warts. So for me, it's not hard to understand that a novice could actually create some very high voltages on their bench. You know, they're not very high energy transients. Again, I could put my fingers directly across these coils. We'll see. I'm sure I'm going to feel this. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's quite the jolt. But, um, you know, of course it didn't kill me. Of course, you know, you start playing around with mots or something. It's a good way to get yourself killed. And it's really transients like this that I was concerned about when I first started testing these meters. Nothing to do with AC line testing. Again, those kind of transients that would be done on a combo generator, again, those transients are riding on top of the AC line to begin with. So would a small transient like this kill a cheap multimeter in the ohms mode? I would say it's possible. So could I have set up a test like this and use this as a standard way to benchmark meters? You know, where here we would just have a fixed output voltage. I can actually vary that voltage with the transient generator. So it's all programmable. And that allows us to basically slowly step that voltage up and see where the meters fail. And that allows us to get some idea how electrically robust these meters are when compared to one another. So let's go ahead and we'll set up our Fluke 77. You can see I have our transient generator set up. Currently it's not attached to the input of the meter. Our Fluke 87 is set to the volts AC mode. And again, our oscilloscope probe is attached in parallel with the meter. And this is just going off to our LaCroix. You can see we're two divisions up or 1,000 volts. This is where I start testing all the meters at. The only purpose again of the oscilloscope is just to give me some kind of an indication if the meter starts to break down. So again, this is the open circuit waveform. So the meter has nothing to do with that decay. That's all being dissipated internally at the transient generator. And you can see the meter is displaying roughly 101 volts AC. Again, this is a full wave rectified 220 volts. So it's going to have an AC as well as a DC component to it. If we were to look at this with our Bryman, for example, and you can see it's going to read 230 volts DC and 115.8 volts AC. I think rather than having the additional mechanical stress of transposing the two leads, what I'm going to do is just run this in the positive transient mode only. So again, we'll just leave the leads the way they're shown here. And again, it'll just remain in the AC volt mode. And we'll just see where this thing kind of stops displaying roughly 100 volts at. So again, this will be five transients. Again, the transient generator, the way this works is when the transient is actually applied to the meter, the transient generator turns off the AC output, and then once it's done with the transient, it re-enables it. So that's probably why we see this flashing on the meter. Let's go ahead and we'll turn up the voltage in this. You can see we are now three divisions up times 500 volts, or roughly 1.5 kV peak. Again, we'll be applying five positive transients. Alright, looks like it's holding up just fine. And here you can see we're now up four divisions, or 2,000 volts peak. Let's just see what happens. Looks like it's still fine. Alright, so I've changed the scaling of our oscilloscope. This is currently 1,000 volts per division. You can see we're now 2.5 divisions up, or 2.5 kV, and we are still at 50 microseconds per division. Again, we'll be applying 5 transients. Just positive. 
And let's see what happens now. It looks fine. It's just for fun. Let's go ahead and invert the leads. So again, this will still be two and a half thousand volts. But this will be a negative transient. And let's just see what happens. Looks like it's causing the meter to reset. And I can actually see the spark gap here igniting. I've gone ahead and changed our output. The scope's at the same scale, so we're now three divisions up, or 3,000 volts peak. Again, we'll be going back to positive transients. Let's just see what happens now. Let's just move the camera in a little closer. We'll see if you can see the spark gap with this one. And that gap is located right there. And for fun, we'll go ahead and swap the two leads. Looks like it's still fine. Alright, you can see we are now four divisions up, or 4,000 volts peak. Again, we'll be applying five transients positive. Let's just see what happens now. You can see it really doesn't change the shape of the profile at all. Again, there's probably more than enough source impedance before it ever hits the spark gap. If that spark gap were directly across the meter, of course, that would definitely change the profile. Uh, it looks like that may have damaged it. If I turn on the AC, you can see the meter is now stuck at uh, 2.8 volts. Let's just try to power cycle it. And we'll turn it back on. Well, it recovered. Alright, let's try inverting it. Again, this will be 4,000 volts peak. But this time a negative transient. Okay, let's just bring the camera in a little closer. And here we go. And we can see, still reads the AC voltage just fine. Let's just have a look with the brime, and again, I can pretty much guarantee you that we have our high voltage here. So there you go, 230 volts, 116 still, and our little fluke is reading 4.69. So, uh, yep, we've definitely damaged it. For fun, let's just try inverting the input. And let's see if we can read it now. Nope. A little bit of an offset between the two. You can see still 5.7. And we can try to power cycle it again. And, of course, still 5.7. Right there, you just heard the transient generator hit. And what's interesting is this is no longer breaking down. Look at the scope. See the profile is still the same. Again, I suspect that's just because of the input impedance of the meter. Let's just go ahead and we'll pull this thing out of the jig real quick. Let's check our input resistor. Up. Oh. And that's what's happened. So. Again, these meters have a essentially a fusible resistor, and it looks like that particular one has opened up.
This should be our one meg. Yep, let's see that's just fine. And let's just look at our other spark gap real quick. Of course that one has not been arcing. See so that one's fine as well. So yeah, basically what's happened here is we've damaged this resistor. This would have to be replaced. I don't think I'm going to do anything more with this meter. If there is something else you'd like to see done with this before I toss it back into the bin, feel free to write it into the comments and maybe we can set up another test with it. So until the next video, I hope you all stay safe. We'll see you later.